Hello and welcome to another study session. My name is Josh. I am the pastor of Connection and Formation at the Heart, and I'm thankful for you joining me yet again for these study sessions, which are very much a work in progress, but my hope is that what they do is they offer some insights that kind of get conversations started, whether they be conversations that you have with yourself, kind of uh, self-evaluation and self-discovery, or perhaps they are discussions that you have with a group of people, such as our digital spiritual formation groups. And if you have yet to join one, if you would like to be a participant in one, or if you would like to host a digital spiritual formation group, I encourage you to uh, either send me an email or visit theheart.us slash groups to find out a little bit more about what it is that we're trying to do with these digital spiritual formation groups, how we're trying to bring people together online, especially in these times that we find ourselves in. Um, but what we're finding is that it's actually an opportunity to reach well beyond just our own backyard. And we're bringing in people from literally across the country who are part of these groups. So if that's something that you would like to do, again, uh, check out that information on our website or uh, send me an email and let me know if that's something that you want to be a part of. So we have been going through our uh, distinct values. It's a series of values that we hold dear at the heart. And we recognize that these are not necessarily unique. In fact, these concepts are very much a part of what it means to be a follower of Christ. We just feel like they are ones that we want to highlight, that we want to feature, that we want to look at a little bit more closely as a church family, trying to determine exactly what it is that we are um, trying to do, what it is that we want to do with our faith, how we want to live that out, uh, not just in a programmatic or in a kind of robotic way, but in very much a, an authentic, genuine way that is very much in keeping with uh, the unique creations that God has made us to be. So today we're going to be looking at our value of called which is one of those terms, one of those words, again, that might uh, be familiar to you. Perhaps it's been thrown around a little bit too easily uh, for you, and uh, maybe it's something, too, that has um, been used to kind of press you down or, or make you feel like you have to go a certain direction. And so we want to look at it more closely and provide just a little bit more insight as to what we feel it means knowing that there are a lot of different definitions. This by no mean is the comprehensive version of it, but just kind of a singular look at it. So what do we say on our website? We say that called, called is coming together to be the physical representation of church in our neighborhoods and places of work. We are called to display genuine spirits of love, respect and honor for others above ourselves that is visibly present in the way that we interact with everyone we meet. we meet. That's a pretty tall order. And I know for me that I have, over the course of my life, and maybe a, a lot like many of you, I have struggled with this idea of calling, or maybe another term that you may have heard is, is um, purpose, or maybe destiny. It's this very kind of difficult thing to grasp a lot of times as to what, did it, what is it that I am meant to do? What, am I, what is kind of my purpose here on earth? What is it that God has in store for me specifically? I know when I was growing up, I wanted to be a, a major league baseball player, and uh, it was something that I felt called to. Um, of course, it quickly became apparent that I was not meant to be a baseball player. And so I moved on to the next thing, which for me was being an architect. That's why I originally went to, uh, to college, was to earn an architectural degree. And again, I quickly realized that that was not necessarily for me. And uh, it just took pre-calculus for me to recognize that that was the case. So I moved on to then advertising, and I wanted to be what's called a copywriter for advertising, which are the ones who write 
the ads that you see on TV or hear on the radio or see in social media. I thought that for sure has to be my calling. It's definitely something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I'm, I feel like I'm good at. Uh, but again, God kind of closed all of those doors as well as to kind of making a career out of that. And so I've come to recognize now kind of in this moment, after so many tries at trying to define my calling that I was definitely looking at this the wrong way. I was looking at it from a worldly point of view. And I think the best way that I can explain that to you is to draw it out for you. So the way that I was looking at it was if you think of a triangle and that triangle is at the very top vocation or the job that I was pursuing, the career that I was pursuing a lot of times, <laughs> whether that be a baseball player or an architect, whatever it might be. And then the secondary part here, these are my giftings. These are the things that I feel like I'm, I'm pretty good at. Those settle into the middle. And then what I found is that here is where I had my calling or my purpose. That was the very bottom part. But you notice that from a worldly perspective, this triangle, this diagram is very precarious, is it not? If you think about it kind of sitting on something here on this point, it is teetering, isn't it? It's teetering on the brink of collapse. And I found that any time there was a shift in circumstances, then everything fell out of place. And it didn't even matter, you know, what my calling or purpose or my giftings were. If the vocation wasn't working out, then I felt like that I was lost. And so perhaps a lot of you can recognize and can kind of identify with that, where you know, you don't get the promotion that you thought you were going to get. And so your career is kind of stalled out or it's going a direction that you didn't anticipate. Or perhaps you didn't even get the job that you thought you were going to get. Uh, I know for me, I ended up being laid off from that advertising job that I scored right out of college, thinking I was on the fast track to becoming an ad man. And a year later, finding myself looking for work. So again, the circumstances changed so significantly that I found myself to be very lost. And I ended up finding a job and taking that job, but literally for the next 12 years, I think, I spent trying to get back into advertising and I would have multiple job interviews trying to get back into advertising and none of them worked out because I was chasing that career. I was chasing that, that thought that I would be an advertising copywriter. And so my view was skewed to say the least. So I want to take a look at Jeremiah 29, 11. It's, it's a verse that many of us are probably very familiar with. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time diving into the depths of it, but I certainly would encourage you to do so to, again, recognize the context that this is in um, the fuller story. Read all of Jeremiah. It's a really incredible book. Um, I just wanted to look at this one particular, uh, this one particular verse as it relates to calling. So Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11 reads like this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. So again, this is probably one that you've heard many times, and maybe you've heard it in different contexts. Uh, maybe you've heard it used in different ways. This by no means is meant to be some kind of prosperity gospel. All I want to show you, or what I want to call out here, is the very first part of this, of this verse. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. So it is God himself who knows the plans that he has for us. Instead of us chasing what we think to be true, what we think to 
be uh, what it is that we are called to, we need to first look to God himself because he is the one who has the answers for us. And so I would argue that the closer, closer we are to God, then you could say that the more clear, the more uh, visible, the uh, stronger of a call or a purpose you'll be able to recognize in your life. I know that that is the case for me. Again, it took a long time for me to kind of come to that perspective, but I believe that God reveals his plans to us. And so we don't have to strive. We don't have to try to discover things for ourselves. What we are called to be is in relationship to God through Christ and through that, through that very real and meaningful relationship, we then are coming to better understand who we are and who God created us to be specifically. We come to recognize and know the giftings that we have. We come to recognize and know the purpose that he's given us in our lives. We come to know and understand what it is that really fulfills us and brings us to life. And so often, I think, especially in our culture, it's, it's a wonderful thing how we celebrate hard work and how we celebrate um, this idea of a good work ethic. I think that that's really important, but that can't supersede or shouldn't supersede our relationship with God himself. He's the one who calls us to work. He's the one who showed us how to work. He created us to work, certainly. But as soon as that starts to take over and becomes our focus, and it takes our focus away from God himself, then we've created an idol in our lives. And that is what we're worshiping as opposed to God himself. So again, the closer we are to God, I think the more clear our purpose becomes. Another way to explain it would be to take this worldview and what we do is we invert it. And so you can recognize just from this how much of a stronger base we have. And that base is actually our purpose or our calling because we come to recognize and to better understand what, what God has in store for us, the very plans that he has for us, that he's promised us in Jeremiah. And again, we understand our giftings and then this becomes our vocation. And again, this is a very simplified, maybe, maybe overly simplified explanation. But if you look at it, you notice that vocation really has a much smaller or much less significant impact as opposed to our purpose and calling. So it's not to say that vocation doesn't matter, but it matters much, much less. So really, if we know what our purpose and our calling are, if we know what our giftings are, then really any vocation that we do, if we know clearly what these things are, we will find fulfillment and satisfaction because we're actually deriving it from here, deriving it from our relationship with God and the plans that he has for us. And isn't this a much better approach, a much better view, gives us a much stronger footing moving forward. So how do we discover our purpose? And that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And I think ultimately it takes time and it takes patience and it takes us allowing ourselves to sit with God and allowing him to work in our lives and in our hearts to reveal the things to us that he wants us to know, that he has plans for us to prosper and not to harm us, that he has plans to give us hope in a future. He has those things for us. We need to just stop and listen and sit with him and hear what he has to say. He will reveal those things to us in his perfect timing and he will give us clues and he will maybe knock us over the head if he needs to. Um, make things very obvious, but the purpose that we are 
finding is in God himself, not in the trappings of this world or the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But I say we are called to speak love loudly and live life vibrantly in service to God. So ultimately, we are called to create and to redeem, to be a part of this creation that God has made, to be a part of the relationships that he has called us into, to be with the people that we are with. We are called into that partnership. We are invited into that partnership with him in order to serve others through Christ, to know how Christ has made that possible for us. And so a suggestion that I would have for you, if I'm going to leave you with one suggestion, and it's not necessarily profound, and maybe it's not um, all that impressive, but for me, it is. it again has helped kind of clarify things for me and has given me a very singular focus on what my true purpose is, what God has created me to be and what he has created me to do in this world, what plans he has for me in this world. And so my, my purpose, my singular purpose, I've written down in a statement that is short, it's one sentence, and I encourage you to do the same for yourselves. Take the time that you need in order to really discover something about yourself and maybe ask the hard questions. But this is meant to be joy-filled. This is meant to be exciting. This is meant to bring life to your very soul. This is what makes your existence here on earth significant as opposed to just successful or maybe even just survival survival mode. So my my statement, my personal statement is that I will care for others with clarity and precision. Again, my purpose statement is that I will care for others with clarity and precision. So what is your personal purpose statement? What is it that you feel like God has created you to be specifically? What is it that you feel like God reveals to you or has revealed to you in the way that you go about your life? What are those discoveries that he has given to you? What are the plans that he has revealed to you? Disregard or for a moment, <laughs> don't worry about the vocation. Don't worry about the job. Just think about what is it that is a calling in your life? What is the purpose that God has given you? And then maybe a, another exercise would be to determine what are your giftings? What has God uniquely created you to be able to do unlike any other? You know, there are many, many Major League Baseball players. There are many, many architects there are many, many ad executives. There are many, many authors out there. But there is only one me and there is only one you. So for a moment, let us not look at the world, but let's look at God. And perhaps he will be able to then switch things around for you, give you a different perspective on what it is that we are called to do what I'm called to do and what you are called to do. And then ultimately how we are able to be that very unique creation that God made, the one he knew from the very time before you were even in your mother's womb, he had a plan for you and a purpose for you. So he is the source. So let us go to him, let us run to him, let us pursue him. Let him show us what his plans are for us, as opposed to trying to discover those things for ourselves and finding ourselves lost more times than not. So that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you this evening about our value of called. Again, it's not comprehensive. It's not the end all be all, but perhaps it gives you a little bit of insight into something that you hadn't thought about before. 
If you have an opportunity and you can sit down and write out a statement, a personal purpose statement, I encourage you to do that. For me, again, it brought a lot of clarity um, for what it is that God is calling me to. And if you are um, looking for a digital spiritual formation group, again, tech, or, uh, email me or look on our website. There's a form that you can fill out on our website as well. Um, if you haven't already and you would like to subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uh, posted, I encourage you to do that. And just so you know too, these study sessions are premiering every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And so next week I'm going to be talking about our very unique and maybe odd value of mobility. Yes, that is a value of ours. What does that mean? And I'll talk a little bit more about that next week. So with that, I want to thank you for joining me this evening. I want to thank you for tuning in and taking time to watch. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May you come to recognize and know the plans that he has for you. May you recognize and come to discover the purpose that he has for you, and may he give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.